Up next, we have Dr. Levine uh, welcoming him back to give an overview about the BROMAC trial. And then following, I want to reiterate that there was a brief change in the scheduling that Dr. Harmoth will come on after Dr. Levine to talk about um, imaging. So please welcome back Dr. Levine. Hello again, everybody. I'm here to talk to you about something a little bit different than the morning talk, which was sort of a general overview. Uh, and I think we're gonna be dealing with a system, which is, I, I hope, somewhat more simple to uh, understand, which is a specific study, which I'm asked about very frequently. And what I'm talking about specifically is the status of the bromelin trial, sometimes called the BROMAP trial. And I hope you can see my screen at this point. Thank you. So the first question is, what is bromelin anyway? And bromelin, uh, I'll show you some different spellings. And interestingly, if it's spelled differently in the uh, United States, England, and Australia, uh, but I think either one of those brom uh, spellings are, I think, acceptable according to the dictionary. Bromelin is ap actually a group of enzymes which come from pineapples, from the fruit and the stem of pineapples. It's available as a nutritional supplement. And what you see below is a number of absolutely positively not recommended nutritional supplements. Uh, those do absolutely nothing for PMP as far as I know. That's when this medicine, when this enzyme is given orally. Uh, so although people will try to sell you this, uh, this is not something that's likely to help you what we've got here. So bromelin actually dissolves mucus. And if you're a, a chemist or a biochemist, it, there's specific enzymes, cysteine protease hydrolase, it lyses glycoproteins or divides glycoproteins, glycoproteins and uh, are found in mucus and uh, mucin, and that's one of the things that holds them together, chemically speaking. It's given with, in this trial, N-acetylcysteine, which is a common mucolytic agent, which we use for people having breathing trouble with a lot of mucus in the airway. So this is given both together, bromelin with N-acetylcysteine, and together uh, they were combined uh, and is called Bromac, so that's what this BROMAC trial is about. Now, we all know that we've been hearing about mucin being deposited in the abdomen for mucinous societies. The problem with the mucin in the abdomen when you find it with pseudomyxoma is it is usually so thick and viscous it cannot be removed with a needle. It's a lot like uh, putting a straw into a jar of grape jelly and trying to remove it. it you just, it's just too thick and viscous it won't come. So there's been some work done using these mucolytic agents to be injected, again, not baked in my mouth. This is injected directly into the pseudomyxoma via a needle or a catheter and injecting this enzyme with the N-acetylcysteine to try and let the uh, mucin become liquid so it can be evacuated through a small catheter or a needle. This has been pioneered and this study is being led by Dr. David Morris in Australia. This agent is currently not available in the USA, not available in Europe. It's available on protocol in Australia. Unfortunately, due to the COVID pandemic, you can't really get to Australia. Uh, and that is shut down because I've referred patients over there to get it when we couldn't get it here. There is a phase one trial which has been completed in Australia. And there's a small phase one study of this, which is currently open and accruing in Spain as a single, single place. What, what did these studies, studies show? And I put some asterisks after the not available in the USA. They're available actually, if you can get the material or the bromelin from Australia, and I've been kind enough to receive a supply from uh, Dr. Morris, and you get approval from the Food and Drug Administration for an emergency investigational drug application, and you get approval from your local uh, institutional review board or research agency, then you could potentially treat someone with this under extremely controlled, extremely limited case-by-case -case, uh, situations. Going through the hoops to get that done is extremely time intensive, not something you can hand off to a secretary to do. 
Uh, and uh, the last time I tried, it took about two months to get done. So the phase one trial was completed in Australia. What they did was they in, used a catheter and placed the catheter into a mucus, mucinous collection of pseudomyxoma. They tried to collect and aspirate what they could. Obviously, they didn't get very much out at that time. So they then injected bromelin and n system, or Bromac, and the, the doses you can see there. And the patients then went home and came back about 24 hours later for aspiration of what was then partially liquefied bromelin, or partially, partially liquefied pseudomyxoma. They could redose uh, at the choice of the investigator and follow up again uh, 24 hours later for additional aspiration. This is what it actually looks like. This is a patient I treated uh, with emergency uh, FDA approval as a catheter. Uh, in this case, it was in his uh, chest. And we're injecting the material. We let it sit. And what you see coming out, the purplish stuff in the container, that is mucin pseudomyxoma, which has been lysed. So that's basically how it works. This trial, we've been trying to open for some time. And unfortunately, as far as I can tell, the American Food and Drug Administration and the Australian version do not like each other because they don't communicate very well. And it's been very tough to get this through. Our FDA has demanded a number of things to be changed over time. And to tell you how granular this has become, it turns out that bromelin is actually a family of enzymes, not a single enzyme. And the concentration of them has to be accurately determined if you're going to use it as a drug. Uh, the FDA wants to know what those concentrations are. And that's going to depend on what type of pineapple you get, because there's different subtypes, and what, where in the ripening cycle you get it. So th this turns out to be pretty complicated uh, to get this done right and get it manufactured. The study, which is currently planned, and again, there's several sites, and I'll show you what they are in just a minute. Uh, is going to be looking at the goal is to look at what the ORR's overall response rate to treatment using the BROMAC, looking at CAT scans before and after administrating the material. Now, this is part of a research trial. This is not for general use at this time. For it, get, for it to be approved, it's going to have to pass trials such as this one. Secondary objectives are are there any adverse events? How long does it take for the, whatever you remove to reaccumulate? Pre and post assessments of symptoms and quality of life scores. The inclusion criteria are going to be you have to have appendiceal origin pseudomyxoma peritoneae, which is otherwise unresectable. So if you can have conventional surgery, this BROMAC trial is not going to be for you. And again, this is given a standard dose. The only real exclusion criteria, if you have the appropriate pseudomyxoma, is an allergy to bromelain or n acetylcysteine. Uh, how you would know you had those allergies before you start, uh, I don't know. So you're not going to know that you're allergic to it until you get the drug. This is a list of the current sites which are either available or are scheduled to be available or are hoping to become available. So yeah, there's one in the Netherlands. They've got a few in the United States. I'm very proud for us to be one of them. There's one in France, one in New South Wales, which is the headquarters site. That's where Dr. Morris is uh, in Australia. And there's one in Spain, which is tentative. And they're doing the other one, the other side doing the phase one study. I think they've treated a total of six patients there so far. So I've been in touch with the people in Australia uh, for some time, and what have, what have we learned, the current status? Apparently, the FDA has listed what they want. There are plans for a production run for the second week of November to make drug. And now the drug has to be combined in a single vial. We used to use the bromelin and the N-acetyl system and, and mix them at the patient's bedside. The FDA has demanded that they both be in the same vial so you can treat them patients at the same time, which they view as a safety issue. That's supposed to be produced second week of November, it then has to go through a number of quality checks. And if that works, then we'll hopefully be able to get these drugs out. We then will have to get official research approval at the various sites. So the hope is to have this trial open to accrual early in 2022. I would guesstimate February 
potentially earlier than that. However, this study has run into a number of snags along the way. I was hoping to have this trial open here in the U.S., as was Dr. Morris, more than a year ago. So we've been struggling to get this study open, and hopefully we'll be able to enroll patients. The best patients for this are patients who have got large pools of mucin that are able to be uh, drained by putting a catheter into a single or no more than two sites and are otherwise healthy enough to undergo these uh, procedures. So this is not for everyone. And unfortunately, this is not a curative treatment. This is a palliative treatment to help patients who are having particular problems who are no longer candidates for surgery. If you are interested in getting on a waiting list, you can certainly contact any of the sites before and we can get, put your names on waiting lists. This is a study which is gonna be running for a limited period of time, even after it opens. So if you think you're a candidate, certainly get in touch with one of the centers. And that's the current status of the bromelin bromac trial. I'm hoping to get this open. There's been a great deal of interest in this. And I've, uh, I've got a lot of patients who are interested in it. And, and I know there are others, frankly, around the world who are going to be candidates. And I, I salute uh, the team from Australia, Dr. Morris and his team, for keeping their shoulder down and keeping pushing the boulder forward so we can get this study open to help all the patients who could benefit from it. Thank you.